I'd like to start with uh, some points of grammar because we have not finished this uh, topic yet. So first of all, grammar for the no uh, tests primarily grammar in use. So it's use of English section. It's not pure grammar. It's use of English. Uh, and uh, the list of topics can be shortened, can be narrowed down uh, to these uh, grammar topics. Um, tenses, passive voice, gerund infinitive participles, uh, which we have uh, already discussed. Uh, and today we'll focus on noun phrases, on comparison linking devices, parts of speech, numbers and dates, and prepositions. Uh, I'm going to speak too long about these topics because uh, I hope we'll have some time for writing um, part as well, writing for the NOAA as well. Um, as for noun phrases, uh, several types of noun phrases are tested in the NOAA. Um, well, um, of course, uh, it's when two nouns, uh, they are used as one word, like car park, police office. Uh, also, there are cases when the first noun actually defines uh, the second one, we have luggage, we have hand luggage, mat or mouse mat. Yes, so the first noun actually changes, modifies uh, the meaning of the second one. The next case um, is so frequent in the NOAA. It's when we have um, a numeral plus uh, noun. And actually, this uh, number plus noun serves as an adjective. Um, for example, three hour journey. It's not three hours. It journey that lasts three hours, uh, like uh, so three hour means an adjective. And in the English language, adjectives don't have uh, any category of uh, uh, of number. I mean, uh, they can't be plural or singular. We have, uh, for example, beautiful day, beautiful days. So beautiful. So beautiful, the word beautiful does not change. That's why uh, in this word combination three uh, our journey, uh, we don't need any ending or apostrophe or anything for uh, three, uh, three hour. Um, then uh, also, also uh, when we are talking about containers, uh, also uh, noun phrase uh, is used like coffee cup and there is a difference, a cup of coffee and coffee cup, but uh, yeah, it's some basic material. Uh, and about regular uh, events like Sunday show, summer challenge, yeah. But uh, when it's not a regular event, uh, we actually use noun uh, apostrophe yeah, uh, as uh, and uh, another noun like Fridays, uh, Friday's storm because it was last Friday here, yeah? last night's uh, match uh, because it's only one off. Uh, when it's not regular and one-off, uh, we need uh, this apostrophe uh, as structure. Um, let's have a look uh, at some uh, examples. Um, again, it's about uh, Albert Einstein statue. Yeah, that's right. And in question 50, we can see that um, this memorial um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, it's uh, situated, seated, yes, uh, on a three-step bench, a three steps. So bench that has uh, three steps, but three step here is used as an adjective. That's why uh, we can't choose uh, any option with ending S or with apostrophe or <laughs> apostrophe S, yes. Yeah? So <laughs> it won't be correct. So the correct uh, option will be a three step. Uh, the next one, it was not the only question in recent Zeno tests, right? Yeah, um, about radius. Within a six mile radius, six mile radius. Again, uh, you can see that the options which are offered uh, six miles uh, with apostrophe, six miles apostrophe after S, yeah, and six miles just with S but without apostrophe. So um, lots of <laughs> Uh, options yeah, to choose from, but uh, what we need, we need no apostrophe, no uh, engine S, uh, because six mile uh, is an adjective. By the way, please pay attention that in this case, uh, six mile is uh, spelled with um, like hyphenatedly, yes, no, hyphenatedly six, like dash, short dash, uh, and mile. Um, well, and one more question that I observed in uh, the note tests. 
uh, devoted to uh, this noun uh, phrases, but it was not about um, number plus uh, noun. It was in question 58, it was about uh, Oscars. Um, it was origin stories. Origin, so a story of uh, an origin of something, yes, uh, origin stories. Um, I remember once meeting a word combination, but it was, you know, it was not in the know, it was actually in EV, um, which is the know for a master degree course. Uh, it was, there was um, the question like consumer goods or something like that. Yeah, and also we didn't need to, uh, uh, like uh, if any apostrophe OS, but here um, there are different work forms, uh, but what we need, the form we need, it's uh, origin stories, because uh, it's a collocation, it's a noun collocation, noun phrase, uh, which we should uh, keep in mind, keep in mind. Um, and question I'll focus on uh, is a possessive case. Um, well, uh, okay, it's not a difficult topic, but it's frequent. That's why I decided to also to speak about that. Um, so what is interesting that, uh, yeah, of course, uh, so it's a really typical case about noun apostrophe S, uh, after plural just apostrophe, but uh, when something belongs um, to um, not one person, but to two people, yes. Um, it will be noun plus noun apostrophe S. For example, Jane and Tom's house. Yes, Jane and Tom's house. Budinak Jane i Tom. It means that the house belongs to both these people. And uh, in the note test, uh, here we should pay attention if uh, it's singular, plural. Uh, here, article a, uh, which is uh, like originates from the word one, yeah, um, shows that uh, we need uh, friends uh, with like uh, in singular, yeah, friend, then apostrophe s, uh, friends photos, uh, friends' photos. Uh, and uh, there was uh, one more example. And here, do uh, the dolphins uh, lower jaw. Yes, uh, actually here, uh, dolphins uh, denotes, denotes um, uh, well, all the dolphins. Like, um, you know, the, do the cat is a domestic animal, uh, animal or the radio is uh, a useful invention. Yes, uh, so like uh, one dolphin. That's why the dolphins uh, lower jaw, the dolphin's lower jaw. I'll continue speaking about comparisons. Uh, when we're talking about the no, of course, uh, there are basic things which are uh, tested in the no, uh, like uh, comparative degree, superlative degree of adjectives, of adverbs, but also, also from time to time, we can see questions concerning intensifies and comparative expressions. And uh, I'd like really quickly um, like um, to highlight those topics to demonstrate which uh, intensifies and what comparative uh, expressions can be relevant. Uh, as for as intensifiers, um, these are really tricky words, like much, far, a bit, a lot, because uh, students uh, uh, got used to meeting them in different contexts. Uh, and in context of uh, comparative structures, uh, these are intensifiers which show um, maybe uh, like larger degree of something. These intensifiers are used in front of uh, comparative adjectives and uh, give maybe some additional uh, weight uh, to, uh, to the sentences. Um, like uh, you can see in this example, yeah, John uh, Joe drives much safer, or this dress is far more expensive, and so on and so forth. So these were intensifies, intensifies. Um, well, um, frankly speaking, in uh, 2020, in 2019, um, there were there were no questions uh, devoted to intensifies. But previously, in previous years, there were really lots of them, really lots of them. That's why I uh, I'm um, focusing my attention uh, on this topic. Uh, well, um, as for comparative structures, um, uh, first of all, of course, it's like S plus adjective or adverb for S, or not S, S, or not so S. Okay, um, here it's really uh, important to remember that uh, for uh, forms which are negative forms, uh, we can have uh, two uh, structures, but for positive uh, form, only one S, adjective or adverb 
as as bad as as carefully as but uh, not uh, as interesting as or not so interesting as not so hard as not as hard as so two uh, options or two two structures uh, are possible here um well uh, what else mm, so uh, plus adjective uh, adverb and that uh, because sometimes it's necessary to complete the sentence uh, with uh, uh, so uh, uh, which is followed by an adjective and uh, uh, pronounce that so um, and students should be able to recognize the structures recognize the structures um, also uh, when we're talking about uh, nouns uh, you know that in front of noun we need not so but such so, okay, it's like a basic grammar, but uh, again, <laughs> students should be prepared for this uh, basic uh, grammar. So, uh, in front of adjectives, uh, such in front of uh, noun phrases, uh, and uh, so plus adjectives, uh, such plus nouns, followed by uh, pronoun uh, that. Um, uh, also, expressions um, like as well as, as soon as, as long as, as far as, uh, but I'm talking about direct meaning of these expressions. Um, I'd like to concentrate on those uh, meanings uh, which are idiomatic, because as well as, you know, so we, we don't translate the word well, we don't translate the word as here in these expressions, uh, because um, the whole meaning, the meaning of the whole expression is also in addition. Okay, for example, I studied Japanese as well as uh, Spanish. Um, as soon as um, it's not an idiom, it's common, really common expression, uh, which means um, when uh, or immediately, uh, as long as. Um, this expression can have a direct meaning uh, when we are talking about length of something, uh, but also uh, as long as uh, has a mean of only if only if and um, cases when uh, as long as it's used in this expression uh, we can come across uh, these cases really uh, often um, the same situation is uh, with the expression as far as um, in the expression as far as i know as far as i'm concerned uh, it means to this extent uh, but also this um, this phrase can have a direct meaning um, when we are talking about something which is situated far or near um, uh, but, of course, uh, we should inform our students about this idiomatic uh, meaning of these expressions. So it can be relevant both for uh, use of the English section and uh, for uh, reading part and for writing part, of course, um, and for listening part, because um, these expressions um, can be in uh, all the parts of uh, the note test. Uh, well, uh, another structure. Uh, another another one will be uh, z plus adjective z plus uh, adjective yeah this parallel structure the more we study the more we know yeah you know this funny um, like <laughs> rhyme yeah um, the more we know the more we forget the more we forget the less we know and so so forth why study yeah um, so this uh, rhyme this short poem illustrates uh, really well uh, the structure z plus adjective z plus adjective. Um, uh, well, and to, I think uh, it's also important to uh, focus uh, the attention of our students on uh, this on this um, grammar structure. Uh, now let's have a look uh, at um, the no tests at some key, uh, at some cases uh, from the no tests, uh, and uh, I'd like to repeat that in uh, 2020 and 2019 uh, they were really basic uh, like cases. For example, here uh, in question 50. Uh, we had, yes, a uh, superlative degree, yes, uh, so it was about uh, the Sina and Rebacelli, um, who, who, who was becoming one of the most famous tenors in the world. Um, so we can see that uh, here it's a classical uh, case uh, of a superlative degree. It was interesting that in other uh, tests also there were uh, cases of superlative degree of comparisons. And uh, the focus here was um, on the article, the articles in front of uh, the superlative uh, adjective. Um, and of course, uh, the option with comparative form, but uh, according to the context, um, we should 
uh, come to the conclusion uh, that uh, actually it's uh, superlative, superlative degree. Um, the next one, uh, again, again, one more superlative degree. I don't know why, but uh, the authors of <laughs> the no test decided to offer uh, only superlative degree in 2020 and 2019. Um, well, actually, it's all I wanted to say about comparisons. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write to our chat, um, and I'll come. I'll continue about numbers, years, and uh, decades, uh, and uh, words like hundred thousand million. Um, so, and uh, the rule is like that. When we are talking about uh, distinct years, uh, we just need the number and that's that's it no ending no apostrophe nothing nothing else is necessary for example uh, 17 38 it's like a uh, distinct year yeah but when we are talking about decades um we need two other components uh, the first one is article the and the second one is ending s okay for example in the 1980s so it's uh, about uh, about this decade, about this decade. Um, you'll see that in uh, the normal test, now we had this distinct year case, but I should say, um, well, um, it's okay, not like isolated case um, when they give uh, decades uh, as a question for uh, the norm. Uh, it was, uh, again, before maybe 2020, um, but uh, there were lots of cases like that. Um, the next one, uh, the next point of grammar concerning numbers, uh, which is stated in the no test, um, are the words uh, 100,000 million. And here, um, uh, there are two rules. Uh, first of all, they can uh, denote uh, like number, some uh, definite number, for example, 300 books. Uh, and and in this case, oh, we need 100 in its like zero form. So no ending, uh, nothing, nothing. Because um, here it's part of a numeral, part of, of this number. So 300 books or 15,000 students, 80 million stars. Because, you know, students tend to use uh, S uh, with these words because they think if it's 15, so 1,000 should come in plural. No, no. Here in uh, numbers, um, all these words come in singular, in singular, because they are part of this uh, number. Uh, but... But also, also uh, we can observe uh, cases when uh, these words um, are actually used as nouns. And here, when we are talking not about like 100, but more, <laughs> yeah, so several hundreds, yeah, but, uh, okay, actually the, here it's not um, like definite number, it's rather indefinite, we don't know hundreds of books, how many, uh, we can't say how many, just, just many. Uh, and in this case, you can see that uh, the word hundreds um, is followed by uh, a preposition of. So uh, this word, yes, hundred million uh, or a thousand here, yeah, uh, then of, uh, then uh, noun in plural form. And we are, when we are talking about hundreds, at several hundreds, yes, several thousand, several millions, uh, we can see that uh, all these words come in uh, plural hundreds of books, thousands of students, millions of stars. But uh, here, uh, of course, of course, it's necessary to remember that um, we need of plus noun in plural form. Um, and it's time, it's time for cases from the no test. Uh, so it was mock test, um, the no, this year mock test. Um, and we had, uh, okay, actually, I like this uh, options <laughs> really much because even if um, we wanted to choose something concerning decades, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that because no options uh, which is suitable for decades, because for decades we need to uh, end in S. But here only uh, TH, yes, end in TH. Uh, um, so um, it was come up with uh, the correct answer, uh, which was uh, the distinct year uh, 19, uh, 19, um, uh, 1929. 1929. Okay, um, but 
I think uh, for real, you know, just we should be prepared for decades. I don't know why, but I really feel like that. <laughs> so we should inform uh, our students because there was a tendency, you know, not only in the North test, but also in UVE test, which is an awful master degree course. Uh, and usually, you know, these grammar points from one test come into the other test uh, because uh, the authors of the tests uh, are like, okay, people who write um, the North for master degree course are the same who write uh, the for schools. Uh, so they use uh, these grammar points in um, different tests, but the grammar points are similar. Um, well, um, and uh, in 2020, we had uh, this number about, um, what was that, 51, yes? Uh, yes, one, um, uh, 150 million uh, records million records. Here it was a um, definite number, that's why we needed uh, this word million, um, uh, which sometimes can be tricky uh, for uh, our students. So it was uh, about uh, numbers. Well, uh, the next one, linkers, uh, linkers. Um, uh, linking devices uh, are numerous uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, previously uh, they uh, were uh, really, um, it was like really um, typical case, uh, really common case when uh, they were tested in the no. Uh, in recent years, no. So we had uh, only one question for uh, linkers, like however, you can see, yes, whatever, somehow they are for, yeah. Um, and here with however, there is a great life hack that after however and before however, we need commas. Uh, so if uh, there is a choice uh, in between however and although, uh, and we can see commas, um, then we should actually opt for however. Because, you know, uh, the meaning of however and although is uh, really, really uh, close. And for students, uh, sometimes it's different to um, make the difference only um, when uh, they like uh, maybe um, based on the meaning of the words. But uh, this formal marker, I mean, comma, actually can show that however uh, is more appropriate or the only option, yes, which is possible uh, in, this, uh, in this case. So it was about, however, and also actually, um, I would like uh, to remind you that there are linkers which can be followed only uh, by uh, gerund um, noun or uh, or pronoun, uh, for example, despite or in spite of, uh, and there are linkers uh, which can be followed by uh, clauses like however, uh, also, and here, yeah, whatever, somehow, maybe therefore, yes. So they can be followed by uh, a clause. Uh, okay, um, so the next linker, the next linker actually was a relative pronoun. Relative pronoun was que uh, question uh, 51, um, only when you place uh, the piece. So here, um, it was just according uh, to the context. Um, what was interesting here? Interesting was um, were the options. Were the options because here we can see option unless. It, it is uh, also really tricky word. Why? Because it means if not, and this word changes uh, the meaning of the sentence, um, like makes uh, negative sentences positive and makes positive sentences negative. Changes like uh, makes just the opposite meaning of the sentence minus plus, plus, minus. Um, so maybe it's necessary to add some exercises devoted to unless uh, in uh, conditional. Okay. Um, so uh, let's continue. Colleagues, please, if you have, if somebody has a microphone uh, switched on, please switch it off, okay? Because sometimes I can hear like an echo. <laughs> so if it's possible. Um, well, and maybe, uh, the last aspect here will be a parts of speech and uh, what parts of speech are uh, tested in uh, the no in the no uh, of course uh, adjectives uh, and adverbs um, yeah like adjectives for defining nouns and adverbs for defining other adjectives and uh, verbs um, 
and here maybe uh, it's necessary to devote uh, some time to word formation to inform students about suffixes for uh, adjectives for adverbs um, well, well uh, so that uh, they um, could be able to uh, tell the difference between different parts of speech um preposition preposition of time of place uh, also prepositions in verb patterns for example like uh, look for well, yeah, like in phrasal verbs or uh, focus on. Um, okay, so uh, any prepositions which uh, follow, uh, which follow uh, after some verbs or in front of some uh, verbs, in front of uh, some um, maybe fixed expressions with verbs. Um, of course, of course, uh, it's really significant. Yes, like uh, keen on uh, maybe uh, also really frequently we can see that uh, chunks chunks. Um, well, uh, I was speaking about chunks uh, the previous time I uh, represented the list of uh, some chunks uh, which are uh, relevant for the no test uh, learning chunks is uh, really well, important is really vital because lots of questions are based uh, on chunks and maybe on collocations, but uh, not in terms of prepositions. But maybe yeah, yeah. Also collocations, yeah. Uh, it's also in terms of preposition. Um, for example, at times, yes, at times uh, it's uh, rather collocations than a chunk. Um, but uh, there was a question in the no. Uh, pronouns, pronouns. Uh, what pronouns are tested in no? Uh, indefinite pronouns like uh, pronounce with uh, some, uh, any, yeah, and show the difference between this, these, uh, that, those. Uh, reflective pronouns, reflective pronouns also. Uh, well, uh, well, um, now, now let's have a look here. Here it was um, interesting because here it was high frequency clicks, like high frequency sounds and adjective high. Um, defined the word frequency. So we needed adjective here because it was a, a part of um, this like noun phrase, high frequency clicks, but uh, high uh, defined nouns, that's why we needed here um, an adjective. Uh, then in this case, uh, we can see um, this indefinite pronoun any, um, and it's re really simple uh, to make a choice here because uh, here we had cannot, like negative form, yeah, and uh, we know that in negative sentences uh, after not, yeah, so we should choose any. We can't, uh, it's not possible to have uh, two like negative, yes, not and no, no, okay, we need any. Uh, then uh, in the next one, um, we had even uh, two questions uh, devoted to pronouns. In question uh, 50, it was uh, about uh, lifestyle preventing or that pre uh, prevents them. Uh, these people, yes. Um, so it was like obvious, and uh, it, uh, the decision should be uh, based on the context, uh, on the meaning of the sentence. And again, in uh, uh, 51, uh, we had um, this indefinite pronoun anywhere uh, to show that it can be in any place. So not in one particular place, but uh, in any place. Then some other cases about parts of speech. Um, uh, in question 50, uh, there was collocation, fall asleep, yes. Um, well, here there is no explanation. People just use it, so it's collocation. So uh, it's how uh, these words fall and asleep, how they collocate. Well, um, the next one, it was um, uh, adverb, it was, uh, there was adverb uh, actively uh, that defined um, verb demonstrates, demonstrates, um, and one more case, yeah, um, well, uh, it's forcing somebody to, okay, so it was a preposition of place to your bed. Okay, it was a preposition of place. So it was about different parts of speech uh, tested in the no. Uh, and now I'd like to, um, well, to speak about, to speak about um, life hacks, life hacks, um, which can help uh, in uh, preparation for this uh, part of the no. 
so what can we recommend to students? Uh, first of all, to have a look uh, at grammar because um, this part, um, the last part of, uh, of uh, use of English is devoted to grammar. Uh, so they should uh, be aware about some, of course, grammar rules, but sometimes only the meaning of the sentence, only the context can help us uh, to come up with uh, the correct answer. Uh, you remember when we were talking about tenses, um, uh, I told you that uh, no definite markers for tenses um, Sometimes, yeah, we have no definite markers for tenses. But from the context, yeah, we can see that this tense is necessary here in this context. So uh, meaning is uh, really relevant. Um, well, um, uh, the next one, um, language experience. Uh, this part uh, is based, again, I'll repeat that, on um, language in use. Uh, you know, uh, I like to compare this language in use with um, uh, such a skill as uh, driving a car. For example, we can learn all the rules, but we need some experience, experience some driving experience in order to be able to drive a car. Uh, because uh, just if we have some knowledge, some knowledge about, or even if we have great knowledge about the rules uh, of the road or maybe even if we know uh, like uh, how the car works yes how how it operates but we need experience the same case is here the same situation is here uh, in the no use of english um well how to form this language experience um, of course now we have only a month maybe a bit more uh, until this uh, the no test uh, uh, maybe it's not uh, um, it, it won't be like the, uh, the correct <laughs> the right decision to focus primarily on um, forming this uh, language experience it can be just additional measure additional measure uh, but uh, if we are talking about students uh, who will be passing the notice uh, in a year uh, maybe it's good to start with uh, forming language experience um, well, to watch movies, uh, to listen to songs, uh, reading books, and listening to audiobooks. Actually, uh, this uh, method of listening to audiobooks uh, is really, really helpful. It, it's so useful, especially it's now it's possible to find on YouTube lots of books, um, well, according to the levels, according to the topics, um, wonderful, um, wonderful collections are presented. Um, so uh, I usually I even require <laughs> from my students uh, uh, that uh, so that they uh, should listen all these audio books in order to form um, their language experience uh, but but now yeah so what we should focus on of course uh, tests and analyzing test uh, cases um, well, um, another one, well, uh, if we can see that our students have some uh, language experience, uh, we can recommend them um, trusting, it's worth trusting their language experience. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, my students, when, when I ask them, so what is the rule here? They say, oh, it just sounds better. Uh, so this, uh, so in this case, this option sounds better and uh, in these cases i usually say oh i'm really happy to hear that it means that you have already uh, um, got some uh, language experience and you can uh, base your decision on your language experience okay um, well and in most in most cases it works in most cases it works it's really interesting psychological phenomenon but uh, i think uh, you know it shouldn't be like uh, maybe of course, uh, uh, it's not a criterion, a criterion, yes, but still we should trust uh, our gut feeling, uh, our language intuition, our language experience. But we, for that, we should have some. Um, well, actually, it was all, uh, it was everything I was supposed to say about uh, grammar for uh, the NEO. Uh, and now I'm going to continue about uh, the writing part.